Hi, this is Kimberly Whitman with Heart of the Bride Ministries. The mandate for Heart of the Bride is to be the full expression of the heart of Yahweh. The recording that you're about to watch is our Sunday morning gathering. Our Sunday mornings are more like all of us gathering around our Heavenly Father's table and discussing what He has been releasing and revealing to each one of us. Each of us bringing our peace, our part, our voice, our sound. Stay to the end of the video to learn more about Heart of the Bride, but until then, for now, enjoy as you engage. We honor you as our Father, as our Shepherd, as our King, as our Lord, our Savior. Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the weather. We thank you for everybody gathered here today. We honor the record of your DNA, your blood that you shared for us. We just honor that today. We honor your body broken for us, Lord. Yeshua, we just say we love you. We love you. We are because you are. We are because you are, Lord. And we just honor who you are to us and in us today. We are in you and you are in us. We are one with you. One with you. And we honor that right now, Father. We honor the fact that we are one with you, joined together with you. We bless your name, Lord. And we thank you for this body broken, this body that is symbolic of our oneness. And yet it is your body we are eating. It is your blood we are drinking. And as it enters us, it begins to change the record of our DNA so that everything in us aligns and resonates with who you are. Yeshua, we just love you. And as we partake of you today, we step into oneness, into the I amness with you. We step into you. We step into who you are and all that you are in us and through us. And we bless you for this amazing access and opportunity you give us to you. We thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. And partake of your the body. you for gathering us together today in the earth realm. To release the sound of your heart, to release the sound of your desires, to release your voice, the seed of your voice. We love you with all of our being. We worship you. We fix our eyes, the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our being. We fix them on you. We lock eyes with you. And we come into complete agreement 
with all that you are wanting to do, not only in what is today, this day, but what is this year in the earth realm, in the created realm. And we say yes to that. We say yes to being the gates that open the way for your glory to be made manifest in the earth realm in a way it has never been encountered, experienced, known, seen, engaged with ever before in all of the created realm. We say yes to that today. So we say yes to coming into agreement with you that today as we gather and, and around your table and have a conversation with you and one another about what's on your heart and you have permission to be yourself and to say whatever you want to say, to be whatever you want to be, to express yourself however you desire, Lord, because you are glorious. We trust you, we honor you. We have faith in you. Faith in our oneness in you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, it is so good to see you all this morning. Um, welcome, Kathy and Eric. It's good to have you with us. Good to have you with us. Elizabeth, good to have you with us. Um, today, the Lord has been talking to me a lot these last... Um, a uh, couple of weeks. I, I, dad, I, I know that for those of you that are with us, were with us last Sunday, my dad spoke um, about Abraham and faith. It was so good. Um, and if, it, if the recording is not yet on our uh, YouTube channel, uh, it will be soon. And so you can be watching for that. And um, if, for those of you that don't know, our Sunday morning and our Wednesday night uh, gathering and roundtables are posted to our YouTube channel, Heart of the Bride's YouTube channel, and you can get access to those recordings, most of them anyway, um, they're on the YouTube channel. And so uh, we're, we are, our, our IT gentleman is catching us up to get all of those posted, but there are several there now, I think like maybe six of them or seven, somewhere in there. Um, and so you can watch those and, um, some of them, uh, for especially the Sunday mornings, the recording did not come out quite right for posting on YouTube. So some of them will not be there, but for the most part, they will be. Um, but anyway, so um, Greg, he was talking a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, he was referencing uh, Enoch in Hebrews 11. And it says in Hebrews 11 that Enoch did not see death that he did and i bought and i don't know about you all um but i have always um in my in my understanding assumed that meant that his body did not die be put in the ground right and and that is true that is correct but the other piece to that that as greg shared that with me was um hey eileen welcome um, was that Enoch did not live out of death. And when, when the Lord said that to me, it just hit my spirit in such a massive way that Enoch lived, learned to live from a place so connected with the Lord that he did not any of his of the ways that he acted reacted choices made the way he saw things the way he understood things the way he spoke about things was in no way connected to 
death. It was always from pla a place of life, life to life to life to life. And so as I was sitting with the Lord about that and just really truly, I wasn't, I wasn't researching anything. I wasn't looking up scriptures. I was just sitting with father saying, okay, Lord, explain this to me. What is it that you're showing me in this? I have all I have right now in this little piece that I'm going to share with you. And please bear with me as it is an, an unfolding um, component and there may be more coming. Okay. I felt like the Lord uh, and Enoch and I were having a discussion about um, Enoch, the first 65 years that he lived, he learned to live in the passion of the Lord, right? He learned to live in the pleasure of the Lord. And when I, when I, I remember, the Lord reminded me about that. All of a sudden I had this aha moment, Lord, is that, did the first 65 years of Enoch's life, did he learn to live out of the life, which is the passion, the pleasure of you? Because then it said, and then he lived 365 years and did not see death, meaning he lived on the earth 365 years, right, total. So the first 65 years of his life, he lived learning what it was, what it meant, how to, he learned the how to's of living from life by faith. And then the other, the 300 years that followed that was the expression of what that actually looks like, how that takes on body, how that takes on action, of living from life and the pleasure, the passion of Yahweh, rather than living from death. So it was an and, not an or. Not only did he live and not die in his body, but he lived from the passion, pleasure, and life of Yahweh that everything about him he learned to live out of life rather than out of the out of a death realm out of brokenness out of missing and broken he learned the first 65 years and continued to live out of the place of perfection the place of nothing missing nothing broken and and when and as the lord and i were have been talking about that um, what occurred to me was this is we're talking about Enoch. We're not even talking about the folks that came after Yeshua rose from the dead. Now let that sink in for a second. We're talking about Enoch, one that lived this way before Yeshua came to the created realm in his body. That means that we have a choice to either choose to live from life or choose to live from the death realm, if you will, if I can say it like that, that Adam and Eve lived out of. And it was simply a choice he made. Because the truth of the matter is Yeshua was crucified. We know that he was, he was crucified before the foundations of the earth. That's what the Bible says, right? So that was even before the earth was formed. Before there was anyone on the planet. Now, of course, he came, Yeshua came in the form of, of Christ years later. But Enoch tapped into something that all of us have access to. And yes, we are on this side of the cross. We are on this side of the cross. But we still have the option and choice to live out of the truth of life on every level. 
and not just life as in, oh, I understand life. And yes, you know, I choose to accept Christ and all that comes with him. But we have the choice and the option to live out of the abundance of his life. Like Enoch and so many thousands of others that have lived out of that same life. Just because the Bible only um, references Enoch and John and a few others that, that didn't see death, Elijah, doesn't mean they were the only ones. Matter of fact, as the Lord and Enoch and I were sitting talking about that, they started kind of chuckling at me. They're like, Kim, there have been thousands. And that's just like scratching the surface. But, but because they're, they're not, names aren't written down in a book like Enoch's is and like Elijah is, and we think that they're the, the exception to the rule, but they aren't. That is the way we've been created to function, living from life. And, and the magnificence of what that life looks like. I loved what Adicelia, the little testimony that she was sharing with us about the seed of our words. Because truly one of the places that it starts is the seed of our words. And, and I'm not talking about name it and claim it and, and all that stuff. That's, that's not what this, what I'm referencing. But living, existing, having our full being from that place of oneness in Christ, that everything we see is through his eyes, learning to have that perfect union and getting out of the habits that we've learned of how to react and respond to things. But truly bringing our body to that place of, uh, wait a minute, before you say anything, Yeshua, how do you see this? What do you see? What do you see? It ha we have, it's available to all of us. I loved what Cynthia just wrote. That means that Adam and Eve could have also tapped into what we had tapped into. Yes, that's exactly. All of us have that choice to just say, okay, here are my choices. No, I'm not going to live out of the death. I'm going to choose to live out of life. And it's been available from before the created realm came into substance. Not from a place of condemnation, guilt, and shame. It's what the maturing process has looked like. And by our Father's incredible love and passion for us, He's given us example after example after example, knowing, knowing, having full confidence that we, each one of us, each one of us as an expression of who He is, will come to that place of full maturity, just like Enoch, like Elijah and others that have walked in that place of from life to life to life. And they are so saturated and, and um, uh, I don't even want to say created. Their entire being is so consumed by life that we become the, per, the absolute expression of life to life to life to life to life to life to life. We are that type of expression of Yahweh's being. And anything, anything that speaks sounds, resonates with any other frequency than life to life to life to life to life is not our portion. And we truly can just go, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, that's it. It's just like that. It's that simple. Right? 
So as I was sitting in, in um, this with the Lord and with, with Enoch in this verse that he did not see death. The other piece to that is he didn't see death. He had a different perspective of what was happening in his, um, how do you say it, Lord? In his experience in the created realm. He didn't see death. Meaning he, everything he encountered, everything he, he dealt with every day, everything he saw, every person he saw, every circumstance that came his way, every choice and decision that came his way was always from a place of seeing from life. Seeing life. Instead of choosing to see it from a death perspective, lacking, missing, broken. And because he chose to see things from life to life to life, he lived in that realm, he existed in that realm, everything about him expressed life. Thus that life released life everywhere he went. Everything he touched, all of creation responded to him from life, not death, because he expressed life. He saw life coming. He saw life being, being manifested. And so the only thing that could manifest around him was life to life to life to life to life. Now, what does that look like? Dream a minute. Everybody close your eyes for a second. Now think about you, your family, your, your work environment, your friendship environment, relationships, your husband, wife, your home. What does that look like? When you personally are living life to life, to life, to life, to life, to life, how does that affect everything around you? And don't, as the Lord is bringing pictures to your mind, don't discount them. Don't, don't say in your heart, oh, that's too big. Oh, that's your bold. Or, oh my gosh, you do think a lot about yourself. Those are not your thoughts. Yahweh never, ever, ever, ever thinks like that about us, about you. What does that look like to live from life to life? Let those pictures, let Father's heart flood your being with his dreams about you, his desires about you, and how his life through you is expressed in your world. Because I guarantee you, his dreams are going to push and press your capacity to dream with him. They're going to push you beyond the comfort zone of what your body and soul wants to believe are true. But I dare you, I dare us to allow that full expression to be not only manifest, but for you to agree with what he's showing you. No matter how huge it is, no matter how your, the, you, your brain may be telling you, oh, that's awfully grandiose. I, I don't care. Yeah, just say yes to it. Because that's what life to life 
to life to life looks like. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And I encourage you, all each one of us, as the Lord is showing us those things, that even out of your own mouth, your own voice, your own frequency, you say, yes, Lord, that's what it looks like for me to live from life to life to life. Yes, that's what it looks like. And I come into agreement with those things. Because that is faith, right? That really is faith. In that chapter of Hebrews 11, I love this, this verse. And of course, dad last week was talking about faith and, and I just had to stay there because of all that the Lord's been showing me. But it says Hebrews 11, one and two. Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for. The proof of what is not seen for our ancestors won, won God's approval by it. And that whole chapter is an account of, of our father's the forefathers and their life of faith, right? I mean, he goes through everybody, a lot of them anyway. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark by, for, to deliver his family. By faith, he condemned the world. Listen to that. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith he spoke. Noah spoke what the Lord was telling him to speak. By faith Abram, when he was called, obeyed and went out to a place he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received power to receive offspring, even though she was past the age, since she considered that the one who had promised was faithful. Do you think that Sarah possibly saw that picture of her being a mom having a son in her heart and mind? So what did it look like? What, how did faith take on action? She had to say it, right? Not only did she talk about it, not only did she say it, she held it in her heart and said amen to it. I see that about myself and I say yes to it. I see that grandiose picture of me being a mom, even though I'm 99 years old. That had to be a little grandiose, if you think about it, on a level. And yet she said, why not? Yet yeah, I'm going to say yes to it. Because I believe my father. He's that good to me. He has that much passion for me. And his word. We are going somewhere. The Lord is maturing us just like he did Enoch. The first 65 years of his life, he learned the skill. He learned how to bring his body and his soul into agreement with his spirit of how to live out of, from, exist from life. And come out of agreement with death. Come out of agreement with the things that he had been taught. He saw with his eyes, with his earth body eyes. He learned that skill. He learned where his true nature had its residence from. 
his maturing process looked like that. And then he spent another 300 years in the earth realm being the expression of that life to life to life to life. Not only in the things that he did, but the things that he said. And oftentimes those things that he said and did baffled the minds of those that were living at that time. Confounded their mind. Made no sense. So we are going moving into a greater thing. I love this verse here in Hebrews 11, 16. It says, if they were thinking about where they came from, it's talking about all of the folks that he previously mentioned, they would have had an opportunity to return. If they were thinking about where they came from, they would have an opportunity to return. How often had we, have we heard the term going back to original design? I hear that all the time. We're going back to original design. We're going back to original design. We're going back to original design. I would like to propose to you that we are not going back to original design. That we are actually moving into something greater and do something better. Our father never does anything that looks like lacking, missing, or broken. And this earth realm that our bodies live out of is not lacking, is not missing, and is not broken. We've simply not seen the truth and express that the way Father intends it to be. We are learning to do that. We are moving from maturity to maturity to maturity, just like Enoch did. Because if you read in that verse, listen to this. So it says, if they were thinking about where they came from, they would have had an opportunity to return. But, they now desire a better place, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Meaning the Lord has prepared a place for us that is even better than where we came from, than original design. Because we have gone through, we are going through that maturing process of being ones that lived like Enoch on every level, body, soul, spirit, every level of who we are. Every level of who we are. So what does it look like to live by faith? What does it look like to be the expression of faith in the earth? It's not just talking about um, what we believe. It's not even just about quoting Bible verses. Our entire life is a faith expression of who our Father is. Our entire life. I don't know how many of you have heard of Mark Steen. I know many on this call have. He is one of my favorite people and I've, I've not yet had the opportunity to meet him in person. However, he talks, he gives a testimony when he got out of the hospital after uh, a severe, severe injury um, that he was walking down a street with the Lord. And as he turned and looked, now this street was broken down, buildings falling, I mean, falling apart. There was, it was just devastated, just a torn apart area of the city, um, had been left untake, not taken care of for years and years and years. When he turned around, the place that he had just walked from, the entire street was transformed. 
grass growing, trees growing, flowers blooming, buildings painted, fences that were falling were now straight. And mind you, it wasn't just in his imagination this was happening, it actually manifested in the natural. There was another person that was watching this happen as he was walking down the street. That is the expression, one little snippet of how we live from life to life to life to life by faith. Did he have to stand there before he walked down the street and go, oh, okay, and breathe and breathe and, okay, I got to get myself ready because I'm going to walk down this street and I'm going to expect for these things to happen. He, he didn't do that. He just was himself walking down a street and suddenly things began to shift. Not because he worked himself up about it. Not because he sat there and interceded for 15 minutes before he hit the street. Not because he yod he bav he for 30 minutes. Not because he faced all the right directions and did all the right things or took communion before he went down the road. None of that. He just was himself. And the perfect expression of who he is in oneness with Yahweh shifted the entire atmosphere. Not just the atmosphere, but the buildings, the, the ground, the flowers blooming, trees blooming, like instantaneous. I would have loved for Yahweh to have given us more on Enoch's life, I'm just saying. Because, you know, I don't know, I, wow. What did it look like? What does it look like? What does it look like for you living from life to life to life? Because you are Enoch in this earth. You are, I am. We, that's who we are because we're one in Christ. And all of our inheritance is in him, in his body, in his blood. And we are one with that. So with that being said, all of us know that we began a new year Friday night, right? At sundown, we began a new year for this earth, for this created realm. And I know that every person on this Zoom call has been having conversations with Yahweh. No matter if they've been three words or three paragraphs or more of what this year is going to hold for not only us personally, but all of creation. And so what I would like to do is I loved, again, I'm going to reference Adeselia, my, my sweet, precious sister. I just love her so much. Um, because our words are seed for the heart of Yahweh to be expressed, to be made manifest. Our words, the heart, our heart sound, and the words that we speak. Release life, life, life. That's all we can do is release life. Because that's who we are. We are the expressed life of Yahweh in the earth, in the created realm, in the spirit realm. We are his expressed life. And so the things that come out of our mouth, the, the voice that comes from our heart, from our being, brings life to life to life to life. So I would like to invite everyone on this call 
because it's not just about Kim's voice, as you know, I love this, to share what your conversation with the Lord has been and what he is wanting you to release into this new year, to seed into this year that is his heart sound being made manifest in the earth realm, in the created realm. And we're going to come into agreement with that. And, and whatever that looks like, it, it may be words, it may be just releasing a sound, whatever it is. There, each one of us on this call, the Lord has put something in your heart that you've been brooding over these last several days, or maybe this last week. And it may just be a conversation that you and he have had that has, you don't ever have, you don't yet have all the answers to. And you know what? That's perfect. And I love it. Because that is how we grow. That is how we mature. That is how we move in, in life to life to life to life to life. So I'm going to open it up. Um, Adicelia, you have had your hand do dad up for a bit now. So I want to, do you have something you want to share? I'll start with you. You have to unmute. Though. Actually, actually, when you were saying that, uh, um, you know, I didn't see death. And I heard seed. I know you were speaking about, um, but he didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't get the seed of that because he didn't sow that. That's so good. Yes! He didn't sow the, the seed of that. And also, uh, when you were speaking about don't looking back, I mean, when you are going forward in a car, driving a car, you rear mirror is this big but your windshield is like 25 maybe 50 times this, you know because you are to look forward and occasionally look back just to you know be aware of the traffic but you are not to be constantly be looking forward i mean backwards so when you say we are not going back to our original position is because we are going forward to a very better inheritance and and we are just being seated in him and being um uh, being part of him and just sowing the right seed and it's interesting because last night i was having this dream actually about taking care of a garden and i was uh, the Lord told me to tell my daughter, Priscilla, some things and to give her some teaching about serving and to give her my experiences on serving, on serving. And he told me that my service to people is my service to him. But uh, while I was telling her these things, the, the same thing that I was teaching him were being taught to me, right? So I was teaching her how to sow in the garden and how to use all those. And, and my son can help me in this because he's, he's been a gardener. And all the things that you pull out, the bad seed, you just pull out out of the garden to allow the good seed to grow in it. The Lord told me, do not... Uh, discharge them just put in a site and use them as fertilizer mm -hmm. and i remember a while ago that when the lord told me that we are the good land we are the good land mm -hmm. and if you remember the 10 the 10 uh the the 12 spy that went to the land those who spoke bad of the good land enter into a curse but those who spoke good of the good land 
just move forward yeah. and conquer the enemies. And the enemies were became their servants. And you are the good land, and you may have many giants in your good land, but those are not to be afraid of, but to be conquered and use them as your servant. Use them as the fertilizer to make the good land be prosper and fruitful and, you know, to, to replenish. I mean, the good land have huge fruits. Yes, has yes. an amazing, I mean, it's, 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 has, it's the land that flow milk and honey. Mm -hmm. It's a land that never stops flowing. And it's, it, it's amazing because it's the same. Where you are speaking is what, what the Lord was telling me last night. So I'm just, I'm just out of my being here. That is, I so, love good. <laughs> that is so good, Anacelia. So we decree and declare that. Let's say that together, you guys. We decree and we declare. We decree and we oh, declare that this year, that this, this year, year, the giants that have been in our land, the giants that have been in our land, will become fertilizer. Will become fertilizer. And feed the good fruit that is Yahweh. Amen, Anacelia. Amen. That is so good. That is so good. Okay, Angie, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. Okay, I'm walking. I gotta walk to my front room real quick. Hold on one sec. Okay. A little back story is that my sister and I like to play pranks on each other. I love that. And um, so yeah, she. for her and as they stayed at our house so we come home Sunday night hold on let me turn my camera around I'm in house cleaning mode so I'm trying not to be seen but I want to show y'all Keely come turn my camera around for me I gotta get my anyway so my we come home and my sister had put up all of my Christmas decorations in our house <laughs> And so it was a gag and she didn't do it nicely. Like it's messed up everywhere, like just strung <laughs> randomly everywhere. Right. And I love it. so anyway, she was, she said they sat here and they last for a good two hours because they thought we've got her good this time. And they did, they got me good. So that's too much work to put back up and I'm too lazy to do it right now. So I've left it up and I'm like, Lord, what are you saying with this? Because I know you're speaking here. And I just heard last night that he said, this setup is not out of season. Mm -hmm. You are celebrating the birth of Christ in this season. This and it is not too early and it's not out of time and it's not out of place. And so he is the seed that came into the earth. And when it says that you can eat of the fruit and its seed, he is that seed. And whatever we speak, we will eat the fruit of it because he is the word and the substance of the flesh. And so that's kind of what I sense and what's um, transitioning for me in this season is that it is now. It may not be what we think or thought or how we see it, or it, not, not, it may not be in the normal timeline that we're used to, but it is now, and it is now that we can celebrate that. Amen, Angie. You want to lead us in a de decree and declaration about that? That is huge. That is huge. Sure. Um, we decree and we declare. We decree yeah. and we declare. Yeah. Yeah. The season is now. The season is now. The time is now. The time is now. Now faith is. Now faith is. Evidence. The evidence of Christ. Of Christ. Being born. Being born. In our flesh. In our flesh. This time. This, this time, time in this season in, in this, this season, season 
We feel the seed of we feel we feel the seed of Christ. We feel is that what you said, Angie? I we lost your connection. You, so can you say it again? It was a little it broke up. We feel the seed of Christ. We, we feel the seed, the seed of Christ. Of Christ. Christ. By his own flesh and blood. By his, By his own, own flesh and blood. blood. <laughs> yes. Amen. Oh, that's so Amen. good. Amen. We agree with that. All right. I see Peggy and Gary's hand up. Go ahead, Peggy and Gary. Uh, this is Peggy. Hello, hello. Hello. This is so good today. Um, it's so interesting, Kim. We had the conversation on Friday about Enoch. And then... Um, so last night as I slept, I unwrapped my package. Jess, you remember, I was one that got one of the packages. And it took out an, a, a justice scales, you know, like the, the wet, old antique scales that weigh one hand, you know, weight on one side, weight on the other. And I thought, Father, what, what are you saying? And he took me back to the scripture, and this is probably a Peggy paraphrase of, also from the exegesis bible but it talked about when mercy and truth come together in the hebrew i think gary looked it up it's actually when they come and kiss then iniquity is purged and i thought oh so the scale once one plate is mercy and one plate is truth and they have to balance each other out then the iniquity is purged so it, in my, I was seeing this all in a dream last night, you know, in a kind of foggy state where you're talking to the father and you're not awake, you're not asleep. So I began carrying the scale around. And when I saw something, I resonate to, I hate injustice. So when I saw an injustice, I picked up the scale and saw which one was missing. Was it mercy or was it truth? And then I spoke into the situation, the one that was missing, and watched the scale balance back out. And mm -hmm. then I knew how to pray, how mm -hmm. to go into the situation, how to proceed. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so it was good. very interesting. So I feel like that's part of what you're talking about today, mm -hmm. Kim, is uh, oh my that scale not to be used as a weapon against people, but as so I'd understand what a situation needed. Mm. Yes. Oh, that is so good, Peggy. Mm. That is so good. Can you lead us in a decree and declaration about that? Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready. <laughs> yeah. So we decree and we declare. We, we decree, decree and we, we declare, declare that we have access. That we that have, we have access. access to the scales. To the so scales of mercy and truth. Of mercy and of truth. truth. Everywhere we walk. Everywhere, everywhere we, walk, we walk. We have those scales. We have, we have those scales. scales. And we will know. And we will know. What to speak. What, what to, to speak. What to speak. Into that situation. Into that situation. <laughs> To bring, um, let's see, it says a Nick, to bring a balance. To, to bring, bring a balance. balance. Of Father's design. Of Father's, design, Father's design, design. And to purge iniquity. And, and to, to purge, purge iniquity. iniquity. Amen, amen. 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 I love it. Yes, amen. 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 Mm. Oh, so good. Okay, Aunt, uh, go ahead, Angela. Well, I'm, I hesitate because you're making everybody come up with a decree. <laughs> Be thinking now, Angela. <laughs> you know, you actually said, you know, what is it that you're partnering and laboring for, that your life, that you bring? And, you know, it's so easy to look at Enoch and all of the things from the, from the perspective of that's already finished and we don't know how it fleshes out in our own lives. And when we're sitting in the grandstands with no conflict, we're like, I got this, I got this, I got this. But our faith isn't tested in the grand grandstand, Yes. but it's tested in the contradiction 
to the voice of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we miss our, you know, those that takes us out, you know, and, you know, that is my struggle. Even, you know, God has uniquely called me to carry, you know, the restoration of family and covenant government in a unique way in my own walk. And it's so easy for me when it's just me and I'm all tucked in with Yeshua to have all, you know, faith all up and down the side of your head. But as soon as contradiction comes, it's amazing how easily, like, you're just swept away in, in, the, in the contradiction and you get sucked into that energy. And I just want to, I want to put that into the voice print here because we all have a version of fleshing it out and it's easy to get all in the, we're in the pep rally right now. <laughs> You know, that's so good Angela we will we will rock you you know and you know but now it's you know but when it fleshes out it. when it fleshes out on the field that we not get knocked at, that my what are my voice print that I want to put in here is that when you get hit and blindsided by that um that contradiction that I want to sow the seed that right there we have that aha moment yes this is where that pep rally now 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 this yes this is the substance right here not in yes. the pep rally but when when we get hit with we get tackled by contradiction so to say. Mm -hmm. yes so you know that's where that's where our faith is tested and that's the playing field and so I just want to decree and declare that uh, when the con, okay, so we decree and we declare, we decree, we decree and we declare, and we declare uh, that when contradiction, that when that contradiction hits us in the gut, hits it, us in the gut, we will be activated. We, we will, will be, be activated. activated. That this, that this, 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 that this is the testing is the test of my faith of my, of faith. my faith and i will fix my eyes and i will, and I will fix, and I will my, fix eyes my eyes on that finished work on that, on that finished, finished work. work in jesus amen, amen. amen. Yes. oh i love it angela mm. that is mm. so good that is so good mm. oh my goodness mm. dad did i see you raise your hand or were you just amening angela or both <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, something when you were sharing that, that, that came to me is that, that uh, I think it's important for us to remember is that uh, Abraham and Sarah, when the father changed their name from Abram and Sarai, he literally changed their confession to the promise. Abraham being the father of many nations, Sarah, the mother, so forth. So every time they spoke their name, oh. they were declaring, they were declaring the promise. Wow. That's and so good. So that was, wow. that's, that's part of something that we need to remember and even ask the father, uh, what is my name? What should I be declaring? Yes. And then the other aspect, the other thing that, that came to me and it really ministered to me, you know, on a personal level, uh, talking about looking back, uh, you know, I was thinking of Israel, that if, we, if we're looking back at that, we have a tendency to want to go back to that. And that's what they kept doing with Egypt. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and when I was thinking about that, I was thinking, you know, they were thinking about everything they had. They weren't even thinking about being slave. They were thinking about their provision and their homes and their, all of the stuff, the positive things that they had, they were taken care of. And if we're not careful, yeah. we do the same thing. I know I have to catch myself. I have the same, do the, I do the same thing when I think about, I remember the ministry there. I remember what the Lord did there. There. And that has a tendency, you know, that, yeah, that has a tendency to want to draw me back to that place because I remember the, yeah. the glories of that place. And the Father says, I don't want you going back there, you know? And it's like, uh, what's really critical for us is the re remembering that Abraham, when he started the journey, everywhere that he, the Lord revealed something to him, he er erected an altar and sacrificed to it. And the things that, thing that we have to remember is that when the Lord does things and reveals things to us and gives us those glory times, we have to build an altar in our heart and offer them back to him 
so that he can move us to the next place, so that he can take us to that next level or to that next place that he wants to take us. And that's what will keep us from going back is, is offering that back to him uh, in, on the altar of our heart. And uh, so I, I find myself, oh, I find myself uh, doing that in the regard to, wow, I remember the fantastic things that God did here and what he did there. And, and wow, I'd love to see that again or go back to that. And so I have to wrestle with that myself. And the father's saying, I, I'm not taking you back there. I don't want you to go back there. I want you to go to the next place and to the next level. And so anyway, that I just want to so decree. Good, Dad. <laughs> I just want to decree declare that we will call out the very name that the father has called us. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. very we decree and, the very and we declare. <laughs> let us mm -hmm. let us follow you, Dad. We okay, decree so and we declare, declare that we will uh, call be called by. That we will, we will be called, we will by, will be called by, by the destiny the Father has for us. The destiny the Father has for us. And I decree and declare. And I decree and declare. I'll continue looking forward. I will continue looking forward into my destiny. Into my destiny. And not behind what to what was. And not behind to what was. Amen. 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 That's that so good. And and I have I want to, I want to add to that, Dad. And we decree and we declare. We decree. We decree. We declare. We declare. That we will call out the name you have called us. That we will call out the name that you have called, us. That you have called, us. You have called us. And stand in agreement with that identity. Amen. 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 Oh, that was awesome, Pop. Okay, who's next? Who has something you you've been the Lord's been stirring in your heart that we need to agree with? Remember, the Lord's, the, it's a tapestry of color, so each of us have a piece, no matter how small it seems to you or how insignificant you think it is, nothing is insignificant, nothing. So it, it, it doesn't matter what, what your perspective is about it, that piece of color, that thing that is you has to be added in order for the whole picture to be complete. So who is next? Let me say one more thing. Go ahead, Dad. Say one more thing. Let me say one more thing. Say one more thing. This is, this is, just this is, as you were say, saying this, uh, that, that Peter, Peter struck, the Lord struck me with Peter's name when he said, uh -huh. thou art the rock, you uh -huh. know, and he changed his name to the rock. And so Peter, I mean, he is the same thing. Uh, who are you? I'm Peter. I'm Peter. Well, what's right. interesting, the other guys, the other disciples that were with him, uh, you know, they didn't respond to him like saying, well, who do you think you are? You know, uh, I'm the rock. And so I was thinking as you were sharing that God is speaking to some of you, the folks here on, on the Zoom. And I'm hearing I'm hearing you say, I don't know if I can say that because this is what the father has said to me. This is what he's called me. And I don't know if I could really say that. But you can say that and you must That's say that. Right. And it's not you it's must. not pride. It's not arrogance. It's not haughty. It is his choice. It's his spoken word. He calls you rock. He calls you Abraham. He calls you whatever he calls you. And it's not, it's not uh, arrogance. That's who I am. That's who you it's are. It's true. And it's, it, it's truth. And it's time to proclaim it. I just mm, want to yes. encourage you. It's time to proclaim it no matter what it is. And don't let no the enemy matter. deceive you in thinking, thinking, you know, that, oh, you can't say that. Oh, yes, you can. And you must. You need to. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Yes. Okay. Amen, Dad. Amen. Amen. So go ahead, Mom. You got your hand up. I see it. Uh, this is directed at our sister Eileen. Um, I just have to say to you that you are a beautiful, beautiful mm. sister. And I have noticed over the last three weeks there is such life and fresh life in your face i know that you have not felt well for weeks or months whatever i know you had surgery but i just want to say to you that i have noticed over the last 
three weeks, three Sundays that we have seen you, my precious sister, there has been such life in mm. your face, and I just see life in you. Amen. <laughs> a freshness and a light in you, and I just want to encourage you in that. And you are just such a beautiful, beautiful sister. And it just brings such joy to my heart to see the life in you. And it just, it just burst forth about three Sundays ago. I noticed it for the first time. And I didn't get a chance to share that with you. And I didn't want today to go by without sharing that with you. But I am just so blessed to see that in you and i just wanted to speak that blessing over you that there is life in your face and it just shines forth my precious sister god bless you amen amen, amen. i agree with amen. that mom mm -hmm. thank you so much i really appreciate you saying that to me i just thank you um because i'm really just holding that life i said to my sister today we don't have to die. We're not supposed to die. We're supposed to live. Amen. So when Kim was talking about moving from life to life to life, I grabbed that with both hands and thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That so blesses my heart, Eileen. Amen. I agree. I agree. Life to life. Decree life to life. <laughs> yes, so that's right. All right, Mary, that's right. Eileen, why don't you lead us in that decree and declaration? <laughs> That is oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay, I decree, we decree and declare. We decree and we declare, and we declare that we will live life to life to life. That we will we live, live life to life to life. life, 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 life wherever life. we go. Wherever we go. go. Wherever we go. Life exists. Life follows. Life follows. Life follows. Life follows. Amen. 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 That's so good. Yes. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Okay. Who's next? Okay. Go ahead, Monica. Okay. Well, you know, I just, I keep, I've been spending some time with the Lord for months and months and months. And he keeps talking about timelines, like pulling you out of the timeline. I think I've shared a few times about being pulled from the timeline of the earth and pulled. And so when we do ascensions or we have these experiences with the Lord, we're actually being pulled out of a timeline because sometimes, you know, it feels like we're there for a long, long time. We come back and it's been a few minutes. So it's that pulling you out of the timeline. So this Enoch thing that Greg was sharing, I, I mean that I'm, I'm like, okay, I need to go back and read the book of Enoch because it's been a long time. But, but right now I'm like, this is, has, I know what, this is just a wondering about when it's time stepping from here to there choosing life to life and not actually dying physically if what has happened is they've actually just chosen to step out of the timeline the earth timeline and go yeah mm. oh my gosh that's so good monica <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. come on now <laughs> brilliant yes so mm. let's decree and declare <laughs> ascension <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so we decree and we declare we decree and we declare, and we declare that we will live our life that we, that will, we will live, live our, our life, life. From our scrolls, from our scrolls, from our scrolls in the earthly realm, in the, in earthly, the earthly realm, realm. Until, time, until time, until time, to step out, to of, step this step out of this realm, into, oh, into this the realm. heavenly realm, and into the heavenly realm, and remain, and remain, and remain, and remain. And remain. And remain. And remain. is that what you said? And remain. Okay. Amen. Amen. With Amen. our body. With, with our, our bodies. bodies. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Jesus yep. went with his body. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. This body goes. Yeah. This body goes. <laughs> That's right. We Amen. Declare. We yeah. decree and we declare. We, we decree, decree and we declare. We declare. 
that the testimony of Enoch's life, that the, that the testimony, testimony of Enoch's life, life is our promise, is, is our, our promise. promise, and we lay hold of it, and we, and we, we lay, lay hold, hold of, it of it by faith, by, by, by faith. faith, amen, amen, amen. 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 And we decree and we declare. And we and decree and we declare. declare. That we, the testimony of Enoch's life. The testimony of Enoch's life. Of living out of the pleasure of Yahweh. Of living out of the pleasure of Yahweh. Is the place and position we live. The place and position of his perfect pleasure is our complete existence. Amen. 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 All right. Go ahead, Cheryl. Well, this is a context that maybe will help somebody because it's the one that I, uh, that the Lord has shown me that um, it just helps me put things in, in, in arrangement. And um, so when Satan, when the serpent came into the garden, what he did was uh, earn the right to impact our soul and cause the contradiction. I mean, that's why we have a roommate war. We've got our spirit and our soul there. Remember, you know, that, that it's, it's been the soul and the spirit, but now, as Nancy will tell you, it will shift to the spirit and the soul. And so when I, stepping out of the church, my understanding is that the church age is inside out, upside down, and backside forward from the kingdom age. It's like a reflection, you, it, you, a reflection. Right. And so in the kingdom age, I recognize that the things that happen to me come through that filter of opportunity to always take my frame and say God is good all the time so therefore there's something in this for me to learn yeah to, to learn to take my thoughts captive to the truth and agree when two or more agree a thing is established so establishing within myself agreement with what Yahweh says. Yeah. Because the contradiction as when Angela and I have even talked about that, this, because the contradiction is always going to be there. Yeah. But it's my opportunity. And so to stop and remember, you know, there's spiritual laws, God's spiritual laws that I can work with to continue to practice, you know, Ian will say, go out there and practice, you know, just practice yes. this stuff. Remember, practice remembering, you know, remembering that. Um, this is going to, this will be your opportunity to step into agreement, despite, despite what your circumstances tell you, because the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. And I'm going to agree with that every single time. Yeah. No matter what. And it takes me from strength to strength to strength. Yes. We'll go from strength to strength. Yeah. And so anyway, I was. That's good, Cheryl. Can you lead us in a decree and declaration with that? Oh, um, I should have known. Known. <laughs> uh, uh, sure, sure. Um, so, Father, we decree and we declare. We decree we, and we, we declare, declare that we will remember. That we will remember when opposition comes against us. When opposition when comes, comes against, against us. us. That the truth is still the truth. That the truth is still the truth. That every every test is an opportunity. That every test is an opportunity to stand with you. To stand with you. To stand with the truth. To stand with truth. And to move from strength to strength. And to move from strength to strength to strength. Amen. Amen, Cheryl. Amen. Thank you you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right who's next come on you bold ones 
Oh, one more quick thing is yes. that somebody mentioned stepping outside of time because this awakening that the world would call it this uh, your redemption draws nigh as we yeah. call it in the church, but the 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 world calls it the awakening, you know, whichever term you use. I believe the more of us that step into this understanding and continue to walk like this, we actually yes. collapse time. That's right. I agree. We collapse Cheryl. time. Uh, and so, yeah, maybe step out of the timeline, but we also collapse time between your redemption. You know, God, God's holding us responsible. The ones that no one understand. The heathens don't know and understand any of this. They they have no, you know, they have no uh, bearing upon collapsing time as we do. Yeah. So anyway, that's just a thought. That's good. That's good. Anybody else? All right. The, yeah, go ahead, Dad. And then Lisa, yeah, did you wave at me? Okay, awesome. and Lisa. No, no, Dad. Go quick, ahead. Oops. Quick, uh, I just want to, say, in light of what you were sharing, uh, my sisters, there's so many things that the Father's doing right now that we have no grid for it. And Kim was talking about walking by faith and living by faith, and and he's the Lord has spoken to me on several occasions, suggests you you walk in faith because what I'm about to do or what I'm doing, you don't have a grid for it. You haven't seen it. You haven't understood it. And I'm going to yes. reveal to you and bring revelation to you. So now is the time to step out and walk by faith and, and believe who I am, believe who I've told you you are. And so, again, a lot of things are happening right now in our world uh, we've not seen before, so we don't have a grid for it. So it's a, it's a walk of faith. Amen. Amen, Dad. Amen. All right, Lisa, go ahead. And then I see Cynthia's hand up. Um, I didn't know how to really bring it up, but just, brought, just started talking about how Abram and Sarah, I was changed by adding the letter hey onto their name. And the hey is behold, reveal. And, um, and that's really kind of where Father has me is, is um, um, it, it's basically intimacy. It's basically face to face with Father. Um, and to me, that's the ultimate place. <clears throat> um, um, so, for me, when I'm face to face with him, I can't see anything else. So good. Um, so that that's really it. It's um, it's really staying face to face with him. That's, that's really so good, it. Lisa. That is uh, amen. Can you would you mm -hmm. lead us in a decree and declaration with that? Uh, sure. We decree and we declare. We, we decree, decree and, we, and declare. we declare. Um. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, that we that we that we stay face to face. That we stay face to face. Beholding. Beholding. What we are becoming. What we are becoming. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. So good, Lord. Wow. Wow. That's the key. Wow. Thank you, Lord. This isn't a checklist, y'all. That that Lisa just let us in is huge. Mm -hmm. And just sit in that for a second. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, can I share what is in my heart? Yes, go ahead, Mary. Okay. Yeah, um, I was uh, crying out um, to the Lord, you know, about my country and other, um, other African country where um, a lot of people are going through suffering because of the government um, greed or something like that. So I, I just... I just went to the father and I cried out and, and I was like, <laughs> father, how are you going to do it? Because I just look at it with my own eyes. It's impossible. <laughs> how are you going That's to true. do this? <laughs> and I cry and I cry and I could feel, you know, um, the father's heart, you know, actually for his people, how that, that, this is not what he's written about about this um african country you know with my with my country also in, in nigeria so and uh, after that you know the wave of love came and he says that he has greater ability to love and he is love oh, to change yeah. any circumstances <laughs> so in my eyes you know um the father's eyes even though this is what i'm seeing at the moment but what he has written mm -hmm. about this country is 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 love mm -hmm. could change the circumstances. So he gave me that promises, and because honestly, I look at it and I just I just say to him, it's impossible by my look, <laughs> and, and um, I'm I'm just satisfied and um, with hope that you know, Father sees everything. Yeah. So I just would like to decree over that. Yes, we'll follow you. Yeah, I decree. We decree and we declare. We, we decree, decree and we declare. That, that what we think is impossible. That what we think is impossible. That what we think is impossible. The Father's love. The Father's love. Is enough to change any circumstances. Is it enough, enough to change, to change any, circumstances. any circumstances? And we proclaim, and we proclaim, we proclaim. his name is love. His, his name, name is, love. is love. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, Amen Mary. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. All right, Cynthia, go ahead. Your hand's up. Oh, so, hmm. <laughs> um, I, w I was going to say something um, and I think Lisa started so I'll just pick up from there. I went into this encounter with um, Yeshua and uh, he did not look um, like fire or he didn't look like upstairs. He looked like um, energy bubbles all around and I, I was crying out to the um, to him that I wanted to behold him. I want to see him. I want to lock eyes with him. And then he said, "Put your your face into me." So I put my head on his face, and I just saw myself being swallowed into him. Mm. And I was like, "Wow! So wow. what is this?" And he was like, "Every time we behold him, that's what happens." Mm -hmm. It gets swallowed up into him. Yes. And what happens is it's like we are transformed at a molecular level. Mm -hmm. It's not something we think it's it's at molecular level. You might come out of that experience thinking, oh, I've not changed nothing, but it's a lie. Yeah. Because he says it begins to change at a molecular level. That's how we begin to get transformed. Mm -hmm. And I was in his face like that. I heard him say, my thoughts are not intangible. They are tangible. You can actually get into me, hold my thoughts in your hands and bring it back into the earth realm. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. So mm -hmm. and, good. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's like, that is why it's so imperative that we stay what? intimate with him, beholding him all the time. Because every time we come into a place of intimacy, like Lisa said, face to face, yes. that's what happens, even if you don't see it, like he showed me or experienced it the way I experienced it, is that we get swallowed up into him and then his 
I call them energy bubbles because I don't know how else to describe it. Right. Change our cellular structure to begin to look exactly like his energy bubbles. Yeah. And then that's how the transformation begins. Then we move from level to level to life to life, strength to strength, glory to glory. And we become like him. Yeah. And that's what he's been dealing with me. And then another quick thing. He showed me this thing in a dream, like Mary, I've been crying out about Ghana. And in this dream, it's quite a, a bit of a lengthy dream, but I'll just tell you the piece that really resonated with me. I was crossing the street in the town, in the city I live in. And there were these children lined up. They were, they were in white and it was as though they were like from a school in, here in Ghana, most of the students have uniforms. You go to school in uniforms. You have the English tradition. So you go to school in uniforms. So it looked like uniforms. And I saw these adults with them. So it looked like they were under supervision. And as I crossed the street, the adults told the children to stand in the middle of, it was like a highway, in the middle of the highway. And then the adults stepped back and a car just rammed into all the children, just killing them. And as the children were dying, the guy was still driving over them. And I was screaming on top of my voice in the dream. I was in so much agony. I was in, I can't describe how I was feeling. And the scene changed and I was in the school and they had lined up more children and the adults were like, if you hear your, if you do not hear your name, then we don't have a place for you. We don't want you. We don't need you. And I immediately in the, knew in the dream that they were going to do the same thing to them. And I started screaming and I was <clears throat> in so much pain. And I woke up out of this dream exhausted, sweating with tears, like all over me. And I had to set up, take a breath and I had to be brooding over this. I'm like, father, what are you saying? Father, what are you saying? And so yesterday, I, I, I spent quite some time with the father. And then he was like, that is what is happening in your land. That is the child sacrifices, the abortions going on in your land. And you need that to be cleaned up. You need to come into the court and clean that up. And the agony you were feeling is the agony I felt. And I would not wish that on the me and the worst of my enemies. I, I don't think I have any. It was, it was, I, I don't know, but like every time I recall it, I feel that the heaviness of the father's heart. Yeah. And I can now, I mean, I hear about the child sacrifices, the abortion, New York, the US, and I'm like relating to it from so far, but it has, I, I think the father needed me to really understand what this really meant. And I'm sorry that it's sort of like a downside, but that is what the father was really dealing with me on. The child yes. sacrifices happening. And I don't think it's just Ghana. I think God is dealing with it in every nation because of what I it's agree. about. To come. So, yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's just what I wanted to share. Yes. That is so good. That is so good, Cynthia. Um, be thinking for a second how you want to, what you want to decree and declare. But it's interesting you say that because one of the things that the Lord has been speaking to out several weeks um, was about we all, each one need to be in our place and space. And, mm -hmm. and I know in, in a, in a, in a, um, in a church age mind that's, you know, take your place on the wall for intercession, right? And it, but it's beyond that. Yeah. It's, it's, that's not, that, that isn't, um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And, and I believe that the reason the Lord is telling us to stay in our place and space on the wall, if you will, um, is for those types of things that the Lord is shifting in what's coming. And, and we have got to deal with things the way he would, according to his design, speaking his voice, being his voice 
in the created realm um, for shifting those things. But it's from that place that you and Lisa have just mentioned where we have, we are staying in that place of in his face, becoming one with his face, becoming one with his sound, with his frequency, with his, with him on every level, molecular level, spirit, soul, and body, that everything about us cries out his sound in our place and space. And I, and I don't have more about all that that's go going to look like, but I think that that's critical, even in what you just shared. That's so, so critical. Um, so anyway, I just felt like I needed to share that piece. Um, go ahead and lead us in a decree and declaration. <clears throat> Father, we decree and we declare. Father, we decree and we declare that we come into the place of intimacy. That we come into the place of intimacy. Where we are face to face with you. Where we are face to face with you. Being swallowed up into you. Being swallowed up into you. That we are changed and transformed. That we are yeah. changed, changed and, and transformed. At the molecular level. At the molecular level. From you. From you. We stand in this place of intimacy. We stand in this place of intimacy. And we decree and declare. And we and decree we and we and declare. We a stay of the spirit of child sacrifices. A stay of the spirit of child sacrifice. In Ghana. In Ghana. In the U.S. In the U.S. In all over the world. And all over the world. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Hello. I'm not sure. Oh, that's so me. good. My name is Go Debbie. ahead. Yes. And Ar Hi, Celia. Debbie. Hi. Arcelia gave me your, your um, number, so I decided to listen in. This is my first time. But you, awesome. said, you said some things that I think that um, was pivotal about us staying in position and not coming down, not moving, uh, when uh, the crisis do come, when we are uh, try, uh, being lured to move, but we stay in our place and know the assignment that uh, we have, because some assignments will be business assignments. Some assignment will be ministry assignments. Some assignments will be just different assignments. Some assignments are just occupational assignments. And as the as the um, as we step into or step out of time, and while our body is still here and we are in time out of time, excuse me, while we are out of time, that we don't lose heart. One thing that happened was that when Moses went up and spent time with the Lord, the others and those around him uh, went astray because yeah. he went up to spend time. So even so, we don't, as God takes us up, we don't miss the assignment. And at the same time, those who are around us that's affecting, affected by us and just as everyday life people, family yeah. members, whatever, we don't lose, um, they don't lose heart. They stay in their position as well. Yeah. So that's what I, I, when I heard you uh, talking about that, I thought that was pivotal. 
Oh, that's so awesome, Debbie. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's awesome. Would you would you like to uh, decree and declare lead us in a decree and declaration with that? Sure. Okay. Uh, we decree and we declare. We decree and we declare <laughs> that we will not. That we will we not, not step out of position. Step out, of, out position. of position. That we will remain. That we will that remain. We will remain. As we step out of time, as, as we, we step, step out, out of time, time, into the presence of God, into the, the presence, presence of God, God, and into the timing, uh, in not timing, what is it, God? Into the the realms, the atmosphere, into the into realms the and the atmosphere, atmosphere and the dimensions, and the dimensions, and the dimensions, and the dimensions, dimensions and the solar. Realm. And the solar realm that God has for us, that God has, God has for us, that we will not, in the, we will not, not, that we will not, in the natural, the natural, leave our position, leave our position, nor will those, nor will those around us, around us, be theirs. Lose their position, yes. lose, lose their, their, position. their position, or their faith, or their, their faith, faith in God, in God, yeah. as we go up, as we, we go, go, go up, up, and spend time, and spend, and spend time, time, time in the presence of the Lord, in the, in presence, the presence of the Lord, of the Lord. in Jesus' yes. name, Amen. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Amen. Father. Amen. Thank you, Thank Debbie. You. Um, Angie, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Okay. Um, speaking on relationship and intimacy, I was thinking about that one day with the Lord, and I was like, it's all about relationship. And just thinking of the word relationship, re is a prefix, uh, ship is a suffix. I was like, Lord, is lation actually a word? And it is, guys. It's a word on its own. So I did a little study and it's fascinating. But the word relationship, just dictionary or webster.com, whatever, it's basically the way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected. It's the state of being connected, like groups or countries. It's the state of being connected by blood or marriage. It's actually the way two or more people or groups behave with one another and it's obviously an emotional or a physical association between two people but the prefix re means again and again and again to indicate repetition i saw it like that spiral thinking of time the spiral of time like we're talking about going in and out of time to do again yeah. and again and again think of the words like repeat or redemption, or renew, or restore, stuff like that. So the suffix ship, yeah. it, it's actually, it's a condition or a state like fellowship. It's character or dignity. It's an office. It's a rank. It's a position like lordship. It's actually a skill or a craft. Think horsemanship or workmanship. So wow. lation, the word lation it's, this is what that means. It's the motion of a celestial object from one place to another. We what? are those, we are those celestial objects. So it means, Latian means transportation or conveyance. So when you think celestial, that means being positioned or relating to the sky, outer space, it actually means belonging or relating to heaven. What? And it means supremely good. So, if Latian means you're a celestial object that's supremely good with, with the ability to transport, transport or convey, then conveyance is basically the act or process of transporting someone or something from one place to another. So we are these celestial objects positioned in the heavens 
with this legal process, conveyance is also a legal process of transporting property from one owner to another or anything, someone, something. So if it's all about relationship, it's like it's oh about the state of being connected by blood to that re again and again and again, all through time, drawing us back to that condition, that fellowship, that lordship, that stewardship, that workmanship of moving Christ from heaven into the earth because of where we're positioned with him. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that. I've been sitting on that because I was like, okay, good Lord, what are you doing with that? But that's what this oh. is today. And then, so of course I'm like, well, what about the Hebrew? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> there's, not, there's not a Hebrew, specific Hebrew word for relationship. There's a word link that means relationship in that. But every time I Google Hebrew word for a relationship, I get the exact same letters. And the, the main thing that I find fascinating about it is that it starts with an open mem, which, are, which is basically the waters and almost like the open men representing the mysteries of God open poured out upon everything yeah. and on everyone. But it ends with a closed mem, which is the mysteries of Christ within us. So relationship, just like the father gave himself open waters freely and fully to draw us into the mystery of Christ within us, the waters within. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that based upon what everyone was saying today and how phenomenal all of this is. Ah, Angie, I'm going to just explode <laughs> over here. Oh awesome. my word. <laughs> that awesome. was incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, is there yes. any way you can put that in a decree and declaration? Um, <laughs> um, I okay. say amen to all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I said, we decree and declare. <laughs> oh. um, Ditto. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, Angie, that was amazing. incredible. Yes. Can you repeat? Amazing. Can you repeat the uh, the middle part? The li lish. Lation. 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 Yes. Will yes. you repeat the definition of lation? Yes. That just is blowing my mind. So good. Yeah. I was like, is lation a word? <laughs> and so, and it was, but um, it's basically, it is a noun. So it's proper. It's a person, place, or thing. So lation is the motion of a celestial object from one place to another. It's local motion. It's transportation. And it's conveyance. Oh my gosh. Wow. I am just, that is amazing. Yeah. And, and, and Father, we agree with everything that Angie just shared. That is life in each one of our physical yes. lives and yes. takes a manifest and becomes manifest in all that we do in our awareness, Father. Yes. in our awareness in our yes. conscious awareness in our body yes. in our soul and our spirit yes yes oh my gosh that is so so good oh a angie would you consider typing that into the chat the re and lation and ship the meanings broken yes down? um i might could take a picture of my notes and attach those it, would that, that might, work? And if you can't, Angie, um, if it won't let you copy, because I don't know how the, the chat piece works, you can also, if you want to email it to me, and then I can um, send it, email it to everybody um, via, e you know, that might be okay. a, an easier way to do it. Okay, I can do that. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, because I see that Re Raina also wants to go. I think we're all going, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Or, no, I'm not going to. Anyway, ah, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> all right. Who else? Who else has something you want to add? Mm. Wow. What a day. What a day. Mm. How beautiful everyone, the Lord has had all of these conversations going mm. on. And I know there's more happening with each one of you that you, we just don't, haven't had the time today to share those pieces, but how beautiful that he has created this beautiful place 
with all of us for what's coming this next year. And that each one of us bringing that piece, what an incredible um, tapestry, he, his heart, his word, his desire to become, to take on substance in creation. It just is so magnificent to me. Um, mm -hmm. And Albertina, I do see your hand, so I'm not going to miss that. Go ahead. Uh, you Go ahead, Albertina. I just wanted to add on to um, what Debbie just said earlier on. Um, so I was sitting with the Lord about this next year, this year that we're in. And, um, and he gave me this picture of the children of Israel when they were asked to come up the mountain when they'd come out of captivity and the Lord said, bring the, bring the children, the house of Israel up the mountain. And Moses told them and they said, no, you go to the Lord yourself and then you come back and tell us what yeah. he has said. And, and, I, and I thought, I said, okay, God, I'm not understanding what you're trying to tell me here. But it says the 70 elders, Joshua, Caleb and Moses went up the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights. Moses comes back by himself and presents and he sees everything that they were doing. And then he breaks the, the, the commandments, goes back up the mountain again. And this time, Joshua comes back down with him. And the Lord said, what is it that differentiated Joshua and Caleb from the house of Israel that God had to destroy all of them? And the difference was Caleb and Joshua and Joshua chose to behold his face in the mountain and that Sounds in this good. place in this place when we go up the mountain everything that everything that what god truly wanted to do with the children of israel when they came out of captivity was to take off the scales and to take off the old skins and to renew their mind by beholding his face but instead they feared and fear allowed them to sit in the same place they were in. Even though they saw great miracles, signs and wonders. I don't know that there are people that saw the mighty hand of God as that generation did, as those people did. With all that, because they did not behold his face, they did not stay in that place of his presence. They were not able to move into the next phase that the Lord, that the Lord had for them. And so I was just wanted to add on to what she was saying because it was such a confirmation that we need to be in that place of beholding his face continuously because in that place, everything comes off. Old mindsets come off and his, what he is and who he is. When you walk into the see the giants and there's giants and everything, you don't see the giants. You see the God that you, the God that you know is God is with you and he will do everything for you which is what separate Joshua and Caleb. Yes. Oh my gosh, Albertina, that is so good. Yes, yes, yes. Can you Ooh. lead us in a decree and declaration with that? I'm telling you what. No. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I cannot think of one. <laughs> I cannot think of one. What'd you say? We decree and we declare. We decree and we declare that as we go up in that mount in the mountain of the Lord. And that as we, as we go up, up the Lord, in the mountain, the mountain of, the Lord, of the Lord. And as we behold his face. And as we behold his face. We will live in that place of oneness. We will live, we will live, live in, that in that place of oneness, oneness. of unity, of, of unity. unity, and bring that into the earth realm. And bring, bring that into the earth, into the earth realm. realm. As manifestations of the greatness of God. As manifestations, manifestations of the greatness of God. Of God. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. So good. So good. Oh my gosh. Oh. Anybody else? Uh -huh. um, Reina and Gisela, I have your email addresses, so I will make sure you guys get those, those notes. 
as soon as I have them. You bet. You bet. Oh gosh, you all, this has been so amazing this morning. So amazing. And I love that everyone has brought your voice, your peace to, to this and what the Lord wanted to, to release today and wanted to establish. He is establishing these pieces, these truths in creation, into the earth. And I just love that. So, Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for today. We thank you for all that, that you are bringing into manifestation, bringing into substance. And we just glorify you. We give you all the praise and honor for it, the glory for it. We magnify your name. We bless you, Father. We thank you for, I thank you for each and every person that is part of this, this gathering Lord, that you just, everything that we have decreed and declared today, that I come into agreement with you, that these things will be made manifest, come into substance in each one of our lives, in our conscious awareness, yes, body, Father. soul, and spirit. And we will walk in unity, union, and intimacy with you in all that we are as we sit in that place of union, of perfect oneness with you. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. We give you all the praise and glory. We bless your name. We bless you, Lord. Thank Hi, this is Kimberly Whitman, the founder of Heart of the Bride Ministries. If this video has blessed you, I want to personally invite you to trade into Heart of the Bride and partner with us to become an essential part of what God is doing through Heart of the Bride Ministries. Your support enables us to continue to reach people all over the world. And we're seeing people from every corner of the globe coming into the realization of their oneness in Christ. We passionately want to see every person living from this reality of oneness in and with I am. He is truly transforming all of creation according to Father's desire and design. And to find out more about Heart of the Bride, go to www.heartofthebride.net. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst.